Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Don't make me cry. You know I can cry easy. Wow, it's a lot of power in here, right, ladies? It's about time we got to this place in history, right? I mean, it's a feeling we haven't felt. We felt it several times in history, but something about this moment, this time now, that um, puts us on the right side of history. And what I love about inclusion, it doesn't look like anything, does it? It looks like whatever it is, whatever race you come from, whatever country, whatever religious background, it doesn't matter who you sleep with at night, people need to see representations of themselves. That's what gives people hope. That's why I decided to become an artist, an actress. I failed math, by the way. Um, <laughs> didn't have any heroes to look up to. 46 years, and I finally found out about these incredible women who <laughs> helped get men into space, right? Right? Like, who knew? So I decided to be an actress uh, for maybe not the most obvious reason. Sometimes people get into it because of the glamour and the glitz. Well, I know how important arts is because it saved my life. And when you talk about theater, I grew up uh, being on stage. And on stage is where the unimaginable happened. So I could play Romeo. I mean, I could play Romeo if I wanted to. <laughs> but I could also play Juliet. And I could play all of these characters that the world say, they must look like this. So I kind of raised myself, oddly enough, coming from the hood where people who look like me aren't supposed to make any things of themselves. And as a kid, when you're constantly see that, and that's all you see when you walk outside to go to school, you sometimes believe that. But I did it. I, I never believed it because um, I did see a Debbie Allen. You know, I did see Diane Carroll. I did see, um, you know, you name them, we, we saw them. But then for me as a woman, it wasn't just about women of color. It was even women, Betty Davis I studied. Um, so I wanted to be a part of that pool uh, that will go out and save lives because I'm telling you, art is what saved me from the streets of Washington, D.C. And I grew up in the 80s, thank you. I grew up in the 80s in a time where I came from a broken home, but you know, when crack was dropped off in the hood, I saw families broken apart. Why are you at my door knocking, needing a t-shirt when you have your mother and your father home? Well, you know, they're on drugs now. So I grew up in that. And I just felt like it was my mission as an artist. Like how do, how do you, as a young child, how do you change the course of what you see happening around you? You stop complaining about it and you be a part of the solution, right? I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I knew I would have a voice. I knew I had to in order to save those coming from behind, coming behind me. I remember um, Mayor Marion Mayor Mary Barry, say what you want about him. Yeah, he was hooked up in drugs or caught, you know, this is a disease, you know, drugs. So don't be so quick to judge. But what he did do while he was in office was he had a state, um, an arts program. Every summer, kids had a job. We weren't on the streets gangbanging, we had something to do. And that's where I found the arts. And we performed in the streets, we didn't care. We would put speakers out and we had a play, we had something to say, a poem. And I've, I saw people come by, you know, they looked like evil, like they were having a bad day or, and they would see our little <laughs> bang up show on the sidewalk and they would lighten up, you know? And just the feeling of being on a stage, like even right now, you guys, I'm important. You can wanna hear what I <laughs> have to say. <laughs> I'm doing something right. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you. The, beautif the beautiful thing about inclusion is that 
What's so important about it is that for the first time in my life, I, I go on Instagram, you know, social media is a big part of society now. And we didn't have that growing up. So, you know, now you can get the message out sooner and you can see your work and how it's affecting so many people. And I remember growing up as a black girl, not really having many images that look like me on television, but it was some pretty amazing women kicking ass on Charlie's Angels. I tried to do the fair faucet look, you know? And for a child, who only understand God's love, you know, they haven't been tainted by society. They don't see color, they just see a hero. Then we make it about race, right? But what's so beautiful about this story, Hidden Figures, is just I starting to see young girls of all races, of all colors, dressing up like Katherine Johnson. And that's when I thought about it. I was like, it has nothing to do with race. It has all to do with how does this person lift me up? How does this person make me feel good about being myself? How does this person or this image make me feel good about being a young girl who's going to grow up one day and become a woman? It shouldn't have to do, to do with anything with race. It shouldn't have to deal with race. But at the end of the day, it should be a balance, I think. You choose to look up to your heroes. And I think there should be options because <laughs> as humans, we have options. And when you speak of inclusiveness, when you include all of these people, of all of these different walks of lives, you give hope to so many, to so many that might not even look like you. But that's what this world is about. That's what life is about. God put us all, you think it is just a coincidence that we ended up here all together looking different? That's a part of the plan. <laughs> Right? We're supposed to be here. People make the world go round. We are to inspire each other. God put us here. We better get along. We better figure this out. <laughs> but that's why we were put, we were supposed to look different. That's what hum, being a human is about. I don't want to go to a planet where everybody looks the same. Boring. <laughs> that means you're telling the same story. So how are you? changing me? How am I changing? How am I evolving? And then here's the kicker. It's not supposed to be easy. <laughs> it's supposed to be a challenge because that's how we learn. If you never fall, how do you learn to get back up? If you never touch the stove and go, ah, that's hot, how will you ever know? I think that's the beauty of life. I think that's the beautiful gift that God gave us. And I don't, I'm not here to preach and tell you that you need to believe in God, but if I were you, uh, I believe in something a little more higher than humans. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but this thing called life can be beautiful. It's all perspective. And I think we're in an interesting time in life where we get to see where all of our efforts and all of the hard works of our ancestors, we've come to this junction, juncture in the road, right? Now we have to make a choice. And what's so beautiful about what, what we're witnessing, you can choose to say, oh my God, it's the end of the world. Oh Lord, it's the end. Or you can choose to say, wow, isn't this an interesting place to be in history? Am I gonna be on the right side? or the other side that takes us backwards. And what's so beautiful is that we're seeing that the masses are on the right side of history. Just look at this room. We are the power, we the people. I'm, it's beautiful to see women being lifted up where we should be, where we should have been in, since the beginning of time. Um, but it's just a beautiful thing to see the camaraderie um, of all the women because it's almost like, it's not, I think as, as a society, we got lazy because it got so easy. You know, everything was going well. We got us a black president. Things look great, right? We got lazy. And so life has a way of yanking you back into reality. <laughs> so here we are. 
<laughs> and it's great to, um, to come to events like this because this is the type of artist I am. Like, this is why I chose to be an artist. I say it over and over again. Art changes lives. Art creates life. Art certainly saved mine. And I am, I hold myself to a very high standard in, in the projects that I choose because I know somehow, some way, I'm affecting someone's life and hopefully in a good way. So I want to bring this to an end because I could talk all day. They would have the Sandman come and get me. <laughs> but, but, you know, speaking of inclusion, thank you for including me in this beautiful event today. I feel the power in the room. <laughs> Women, yes, we are the answer. I've always felt that way. I never compete with my sisters. I never have. My circle of women that I keep around me are very close. My best friend of 30 years, that's how I roll. They keep me grounded. Um, women, we are the answer, but we are the answer when we come to it together. And it's just beautiful to see and it's a beautiful to be a part of. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank y'all, sit down. <laughs> so I think you all want to hear more from Taraji gonna Henson. We're going to have a conversation. Yes. I saw uh, the questions. I didn't want to answer them too much, so I had to back off. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So first, I just want to say I thought I had the world's biggest girl crush on you as Cookie Lion. <laughs> Then I saw you as Katherine Johnson beating the boys at math, and I knew I had been wrong. <laughs> and here you are in person, so thank you so much for being here. Look, you embody completely different characters, and I think it would be really interesting for our audience to know how you do that, because all of us out here, sometimes we find ourselves in a room and we're the only. And sometimes we find ourselves with our sisters and we got to act different in those two situations. So what can we learn from you about how to be effective embodying different characters in different situations? Um, well, for me, it's a difference because I'm a trained actress. So there's a craft to that. <laughs> lots and lots of training. <laughs> but, um, you know, as far as moving in, in crowds and having to wear the mask, I think naturally that comes from being black. <laughs> You always got to wear two faces, but just, it was a joke, but it was very real. <laughs> um, I think it was very real. <laughs> it was very real. But no, sometimes in life, you know, as women, sometimes we have to pull out the man underwear just to compete in the room and hold our own. And that comes from a place of confidence, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, just knowing that you have a voice, knowing that what you have to say is important and standing by that. Um, and that's who I am. That's why I got this tattoo, The Truth, because before my father passed, he said, live in your truth. Don't be afraid of your truth, of who you are, because God made us all uniquely different for a reason. <laughs> so as long as I'm in my truth, I can move anywhere. I can go anywhere and say anything because it's my truth. And my truth comes from a place of love. So with that being said, I'm fearless. <laughs> <laughs> fearless. We love fearless. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so that is a really important point. I read your book mm -hmm. and I've uh, looked into your history and I understand you've had challenges as many of us have. It's not, it's not a straight road. You don't get there easy all the time. But when you encounter fear, you don't run away. You, you find that courage within and you move forward. I think that's another important message for all of us. How do we find that and do that? How do you do that? The first thing is understanding that life is spiritual warfare. That's what it is. It's the light chasing dark, sun chasing the moon, uh, love, hate, yes, no, negative, positive. That's life. And every day as a human, you have a choice. You wake up and you say, which side am I gonna choose to be on today? Because <laughs> it's a battle every day. And you either choose fear or you choose faith. 
fear and faith cannot exist together. You got to choose one. You can't say, oh, Lord, I believe you're going to bless me today, and I'm going to go out here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work, and a blessing is going to come. You can't say that but stay stuck in your so on your sofa in fear because the job is not going to come to you. The blessing is not going to knock on the door. You have to choose a side, and you have to walk that path when you leave your house. So... I just choose every day. I, some days it's harder than others. <laughs> but I just constantly choose faith. And whatever scares me, faith will clear out the fear because it can't coexist. That's awesome. I, I think many of us are, are people of faith, and I think that we don't necessarily always discuss it. But faith obviously has had a huge role in where you are today. Do you want to just talk about that a little bit more? You know, like <laughs> you, my father told me, all you have to have is the faith of a mustard seed. Have you ever seen the size of a mustard it's seed? It's tiny, tiny. That's what I went to LA with. I didn't know how my life was going to pan out. I had a son. I mean, all the odds were stacked against me, but I had the faith of a mustard seed. And I also had a Howard um, University training. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was a blessing. Well, yeah, well, that's the thing. That, that the talent sustains you, but it doesn't necessarily get you in the door. No one cares about how many plays you did on, theater, uh, on a stage in Hollywood. They don't care. Can you get the audience to buy a ticket? And that takes time. But what I did know was if, God, you give me the time, I have the talent. Just give me the time. I'll make it, you know. And, and, you know, never compare yourself to people's journeys. Their journey is their journey and yours is yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have to train yourself to just stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. And patience and faith. Patience. Faith, faith, faith. Get it? <laughs> faith. <Yes. laughs> okay, so uh, uh, a little gift of God. The, the script for Hidden Figures mm -hmm. shows up on your doorstep with a story in it that I don't know if you knew, but I'm going to say most of us did not learn that story in our history class. Yeah. How is that possible? So... How was it for you to bring that story to life that is so important to women, so important to African-American women, so important to people of color, so important to this country to set the record straight? The, your passion is <laughs> why I did it. I got the script, and I just remember feeling robbed of, of, yeah. of a dream. No one ever said to me, Taraji, you cannot, you can never do math and science because it's for boys. And there was just an understanding. No one was ever bold enough to tell me that, but <laughs> there, it was just an understanding. And so when it was time to pick my desk in the math and science classes, I always chose the desk in the back because why am I here? It's for boys. And I get the script and I just, I'm immediately upset. I'm enraged because how many other girls are walking around right. thinking the same thing? Right. And I said, well, God, you gave it to the right one. <laughs> because I made, it, was, it was passion. And it was and everybody who signed on to do the project, it had become their mission to make sure that we included this story that had been excluded for whatever reasons, you know. We can say that it was buried on purpose. Or we can say, like oftentimes in my career, we celebrate us, the actors. You never see the 9,999 people that help make me look beautiful on that screen. So it's the same thing. We celebrate the astronauts. We don't necessarily celebrate all the scientists to help get them into space. So I think there was a little bit of that and what was going on in the time. But guess what? Here we are. Here we are. And we are. fixed it. <laughs> we we fixed had time. It. Thank you for that. We had time <laughs> to fix it. <laughs> so, um... Women and African Americans are underrepresented mm -hmm. in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, which is very important in this room. We are in the Bay Area here, home of technology. We're also underrepresented in, in film and television, and, and the Hollywood pay gap comes to mind for me. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going on there, and what do you think we can do to, to change that? Um, you know, I started off wanting to be just an actress, didn't really know that I would end up producing. Um, you know, that's, that's what it takes. It takes people that break this glass ceiling down, create opportunities for others coming behind them. And that's how you, 
uh, you see this diversity. Um, and that's what you're starting to see. I saw, I saw somewhere um, that Kerry Washington and Viola Davis are both starting production companies. And so it takes that. You know, every time I go and I talk to these young kids, you know, they're so infatuated with being an actress. They want to be pretty and they want to be in front of the camera. And I'm like, no, 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 you're thinking too small. Where are the female studio execs? Where are our African-American executives that are going to change the way we see film. So it's all getting up, making people think differently. You know what I mean? So I do the best I can. I make the little bit of change that I can and hopefully that affects the next person and so on and so forth. But I think Hollywood is in a good place. I think we're, I think Hollywood is the most progressive when it comes to diversity. I think the world looks to Hollywood as an example, and I think we're doing really well. You know, I think there's tremendous power in film and television Absolutely. to pull the world forward. It's why it's really an incredibly important occupation. I mean, incredibly important. That's why it saddens me to see that the government snatching, and it has been for years, arts Funny. and music, music out of schools, especially public schools, because <laughs> that's where it's needed. Yes, that's what engages you know, the every child's child, mind. It does. And it's, you have to come up with different ways to entertain and educate these children today because now we're battling the internet. Yeah. Now a kid can zone out real easy in class on the phone. Right. You know, so we have to make it interesting, and I think that's where the arts play such a big role. Oh, I'm, I am a huge advocate for the arts as well, so yes. um, thank you for speaking to that. So you and I have one thing in common. We're both single moms. Yes. Um, and... Uh, Often we hear that women can't have it all, but you, I believe, had your son, Marcel, when you were still in college. You went off to Hollywood with hardly any change in your pocket. Um, and yet, here we are sitting on this, on this dais today, and you know, we have a lot, we have a lot. So what's your advice for women in the audience around balancing career, ambition, motherhood, family, faith, how do you do it? How do you bring those together? I just, I, I ignore naysayers because when you're doing something different or something that no one has ever done before, you look like a unicorn. So they're like, ah, <laughs> whoa, what are you doing? You'll never make it, ah, you're gonna die, you're gonna starve, and it's like, <laughs> I haven't even tried yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just got warmed up here. I mean, God, let me, I just had the baby. Can I at least try to finish college first? You know, so I think when you do things that society deems is not the right way. But first of all, what is the right way? Oh, I don't know. I've never known. Right. <laughs> the right way is your way. Yeah. <laughs> you create your own standards. Well, miss, I know you got married and, and you have the picket fence. Well, life just didn't deal me those cards. I have these cards, so this is what I'm going to do with them. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm a horrible person or <laughs> that I'm going to fail in life because I became a mother early. It it's just means I'm a mother now, moving on. I mean, I think sometimes, and a lot of times when people, it's not out of hate, it's out of fear, it's out of their own fear. But what you're not going to do is project your fear onto me. Your fear has, is none of my business. Yeah. It's not. And I was with my son's father. He was my boyfriend. It wasn't like I was out there being loosey-goosey and it was an oops. <laughs> but it was an oops because we didn't plan it. But <laughs> it was okay. It was just my journey. And, and I, you know, some people looked at her, oh, she's a single mother. She's going to drop out of college. I love to hear those whispers. Please underestimate me. <laughs> I'm begging you. <laughs> because I will sit back and watch you eat crow. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, and it's just about having that fight. You see that fight I have? If you don't have that fight for yourself, no one else. I tell my son this all the time. Baby, I can't want it more than you. Right. I can't. I can give you the road map. I can tell you the people to go and see. But if you don't have that will inside, that passion inside of you, it's moot. So you have to have that. And you can't let people dictate and project. I'm sorry, I don't. So you all, you, you heard it here. We're out of time, but you're, you get a certain hand of cards and <laughs> you who decides how to play them. Choice and driven. don't don't let other people's fears yeah, rule you. Thank I think you. it was yes. one other Question, important question Which on it. One? You were saying something about how white women and black oh. women, how we can come together. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay, I, I didn't know if we had time, but I'm going to okay. address that before okay. we leave. Just so you know. Wait, do you want me to ask the question? Or yeah, you ask, the go question. ask the question. <laughs> ask the question. I'm going to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, speaking the truth here, in the film Hidden Figures, white women did not show support for or include their black sisters. Do you think that dynamic has changed since the 60s? The beautiful thing about this film, three important white women made it happen. Um, Donna Gelati got the 54 book page proposal. Wasn't even a full book yet. Sent it to Elizabeth Gabler, studio exec over at Fox. She got it to Stacey Snyder, the president. And here's this film. We need each other. And we got to get along. 